It is what God is doing that he is doing here on this earth. What he sees God do, he does. What he sees God say, he says. So his words and his actions are totally from God. Therefore, you can see God in and through Jesus Christ. And ultimately through the cross of Jesus Christ, you can see how that he is the God of love. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that. Be still and know. Be still and know that I. This is God's word for you. Be still. No matter what you're going through. the God that healeth me. When Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, what does it mean? It doesn't mean a direct, immediate contact or vision of God with, with God. It means an indirect thing, a knowledge of God that comes through looking at Jesus. His words, his deeds show who the Father is. That's all it is. No man has seen the Father. If you see Jesus, you can see and know who the Father is. You can know more about who the Father is through Jesus than anyone else. Now, why are these things so important? Why is John emphasizing this? Why is John saying, making a point to say, no man has seen God at any time? Because he knows that it is in this uncertain world where nothing is certain, everything is in a state of flux, you know, moving and, and changing. You don't know what is there uh, for you tomorrow. There is tremendous uncertainty in this world. People change, world changes, nation changes, policies change, everything changes. And uh, so we are always, uh, you know, a bit uncertain about everything. And in the world of uncertainty, people are trying to hold on to something that is certain, that is sure. And uh, we are saying God is something that is sure. He can be uh, a sure foundation for our life. He's the only thing that is sure. Nothing else is sure. So if God is someone that I can count to never change and be sure that he is always there and that, that he is the same, if, if, if he is the one that I can hold on to, then how can I get this assurance that he really is there? Because I can't see him. If I'm going to hold on to him, I can't see him. If I can't see him, can I know him? If I can't see him, can I really say I know him? Throughout the Bible we read in the New Testament, a lot of people say, I know him, even in the Old Testament. So do we, can we know a God whom we cannot see? 
whom no one has ever seen how can i have the assurance that i know him that he is real that he is there and that he makes a difference in my life and he is powerful that he is working in my life he is there with me how can i know that how can i get that assurance in a world of uncertainty people are trying to grab on to something that is sure and certain and so in their eagerness to do that people will try to reach out for various things that they can see because we live in a world of senses you see we only see what we believe right if you can't see you don't believe there are a lot of people that live with that philosophy you know you don't see don't believe don't believe anything that you can't see they think that's a good philosophy in some ways it is good but not always not when it comes to god because god is one you cannot see he that cometh to god must believe that he is why because you can't see so you must believe that he is if you can see you don't have to believe that he is right because you cannot see you have to believe that he is so you cannot see god so how can you have the assurance people are going to in their sense knowledge world being oriented in sense knowledge they seeing and believing only believing what you see people are going to reach out to things that they can see and hear and touch right no wonder thomas said when the disciples told we saw the lord he was risen he came and appeared to us we saw him it was jesus he said i am not going to believe until i put my hands in his wounds right and when jesus came one time after that when thomas was there jesus already knew without anyone telling him he already knew what thomas had said so when he looked at thomas he said come here put your hand here he must have thought my god who told him you know without asking he knows what i have been talking about jesus said come put your hand here and he puts his hand there and when he puts his hand there he realizes that it's the same lord and he says lord god that's this response he recognizes this is the son of god he says lord god no he has believed he has seen and he has believed he has seen jesus and believed you know what jesus said to him jesus didn't clap his hands and say wonderful you wanted to see i've shown it to you and you've believed no actually jesus rebuked him he said you saw and therefore you believe and then he said blessed are those who do not see yet believe now because thomas put his hand on the side of jesus and felt him and came to know that it was jesus today in chennai a lot of people will build a will will build some kind of a temple for him thomas because he put his hand there he must have been very special none of us have put his put our hand on jesus side here is a man that has touched and known has seen with his eyes and has felt with his hands that same jesus that he had always known he can tell us that he really saw jesus because he saw with his eyes and touched with his hands none of us have seen it therefore he must be something special some of us will even begin to worship him a little bit and make him a big hero jesus rebuked him and then he turns around and he calls us blessed he's talking to thomas but he's talking about us why i say he's talking about us because he said blessed are those who have not seen yet believe that's me that's you we have not seen yet believe we have not put our hand on his side we have not seen the risen jesus we have not seen with these naked eyes we have not felt with our hands who he is we have none of that knowledge we have not known him in that way but we have believed that god sent his son jesus christ 2000 years ago in this world that he came and he lived and he spoke these things he did these things and he died on the cross and god raised him from the dead 
and that he was lifted up to God's right hand and was seated there above all principality and power, might and dominion over every name that is named, made head over the church. We believe him. We worship him. We believe that he's God and Savior. We put our faith in him. We have confessed him as our Lord and Savior. Jesus says, Thomas, you are not the one blessed. They are blessed. Not the one who put his hand. So I'm trying to say, there's nothing special about putting your hand on Jesus. What if Jesus came by and you really touched him today? Are you going to cut off your hand, put it, put it in a museum and say, this finger touched Jesus, you know. In 2016, January, <laughs> nothing special about touching and seeing with these eyes. Something very special about believing without seeing. Jesus said, blessed are those that believe without seeing. Now, blessed, the word blessed means empowered to prosper. So Jesus is saying, those people that believe without seeing are the ones that are empowered to prosper, empowered to succeed. There is power in that kind of belief, in that kind of faith. That kind of faith is, you know, the world will say, you haven't seen, you believe? You mean to say that you had nothing for your eyes to see and yet you believe? To them, this is, you have no proof, you have not seen, how can you believe? The Bible says, such a person who has not seen but yet believes is empowered by God himself to prosper. He's a blessed person. He's a powerful person. If he applies that approach to every promise of God, everything that God says, if he applies that and says, I am not going to trust what I see, but I'm going to trust what it says, what the word of God says. I'm going to trust in Jesus, even though I've not seen him. I believe in him. I confess him as Lord. I follow him. I worship him because I believe what God has done through him and in him. That, that is what brings blessedness. So Jesus tells Philip, listen, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. In other words, the meaning is this. Well, Philip, in this world, at this time, this is all you're going to get. You want to see the Father? You say, show us the Father. Only that will be sufficient for us. Only then we'll be satisfied. Jesus says, nothing doing. This is all you're getting. You want to see the Father? You see me. See what? See why God has sent me. See why I have taken humanity. See why I've come into this world. See what I'm saying and doing. Look at my miracles. Look at the things that I do. Look at what I say. And look at the cross and understand the cross. That is why the Christian preaching is a preaching about Christ. Paul said, I preach Christ. We preach Christ. Not simply Christ. He says, we preach Christ crucified. Why? Because that is the ultimate revelation that God is love. So John says, God is love. But this God cannot be seen, nobody has seen at any time. So how can we know that God is love? How can he know that this God is a God of love? How can he know that he has loved us? How can he know that, how can we know that we can trust in that love? There is only one way. The answer is what Jesus gave to Philip. You cannot see God. No man has seen God at any time. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. That's the answer. So I say to you, you want to see the Father? The number one way to see the Father is to see him through Jesus and what he has spoken through this Son whom he has sent in flesh. That's how you see the Father. Now why is John stating this? Because craziness already started in the church in the first century. What kind of craziness? Now what we have today are the grandsons of those crazy people. Craziness already started in the first century. 
there are some people in the first century that did not like what Paul said about, you know, how you should not walk by sight, but you must walk by faith. They wanted it exactly reversed. They said, we don't want to walk by faith, we want to walk by sight. They were the kind that said, show us the Father, only that will be satisfied. So what did they do? History says that such people that emphasized the seen and the heard and, and such experiences and visions and, and such things, immediate, direct vision of God, emphasize the audible voice of God and so on. Are you listening? <laughs> In the first one or two centuries itself, they were emphasized the immediate, direct vision of God. That's like seeing you right here, sitting there, just like seeing this person. Immediate and direct vision. They emphasized audible voice. So what they would do, it seems, they would gather and they will have fastings. Ah, now we know where these people got it from. I have seen in my own lifetime some people, you know, that said, I won't even drink a drop of water and won't even swallow my saliva, they said, until I see God. It says, no man has seen God at any time, but I'm going to see him. I'm going to make God show me his face. I am going to see him. But the Bible says no man has seen God at any time. I think any smart person reading that would not meddle with that. You know, if no man has seen God at any time, then I should not mess with that. I should be satisfied, say, well, then how can I see God? Well, in and through Jesus Christ and what he has done, what God has done in and through Jesus Christ, through him, I can see God. That's the only way I can see God. So they, they would gather there, it seems, and they will fast and intensely pray and seek visions and direct encounters and, and somehow God to appear and so on. This led to all kinds of hallucinations and, and all kinds of psychological phenomenon, you know. All kinds of heresies and wrong things it led to because people just became crazy, you know. There was a great, great preacher in America an old man that, uh, that used to be very famous, he says that one lady was brought to him from the mental asylum one time in his meeting to be prayed for. And, uh, and that lady is a, one who belongs to a very spiritual church, so-called spiritual church, you know. And she's been in the mental asylum for some years. And they had taken permission to bring her to the meeting to be prayed for, and they... They told what the problem is with her, that she's hearing voices. So he got ready to pray. He was just about to lay her, his hands on her and pray. Somehow the Lord impressed upon him to stop and uh, talk to her a little bit. So he looked at her and he said, listen, are you always after wanting to hear audible voices, some voice from heaven? Are you always seeking after that? She said, oh yes, for many years. So if you're always seeking for audible voices from heaven, the devil is good at producing some voices. He's got some stereos going and sound effects. <laughs> he can produce it. I'm God speaking, you know. He can produce some nice things out of hell, you know. So she was looking for some voices to hear. She was seeking after these experiences and she started hearing voices and totally got crazy, mentally insane and had to be in the hospital all these years. So this man looked at her and said, listen, I won't pray for you if you will not promise me that you will stop seeking that kind of thing. Tell me that you will not go after those things. Tell me that you will turn away from that and repent from that and trust in Jesus and live for God without seeking those experiences. Then only I'll pray for you, he said. Otherwise, my prayer is not going to help you because I'm going to pray and you're going to go on seeking uh, voices and as long as you seek voices, you're going to hear some voice. You know. If you're seeking voices and visions, I'm sure, I, I'm sure some, some people are thinking, well, this guy is not a Pentecostal guy. Now, what kind of certificate do you need that I'm a Pentecostal, you know? 
I'm as Pentecostal as anybody and even more Pentecostal than a lot of people. I'm dipped and dyed, cooked both ways. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I've been in this for a long time, you know. So what is my position on visions and things like that, on hearing, uh, you know, God speak and all that? I totally believe. You know, can, can God give you a vision? Can God come and talk? Yeah, I believe that God can give you a vision, God can talk to you and all that. But I do not believe that you should go seeking for these things. When you go seeking for these things and live with a mind that constantly goes after these things, I tell you there is a danger of becoming insane like that. And a lot of Christians have become literally insane by doing these things. And that is why John is saying, he knows how the world is. They are wanting some experience because we are sense knowledge people. We see and believe. It's easy, we think, if we saw and believed, it's easy for us. That if we can see something, it's easy to believe. That's our orientation in this world, seeing and believing. So he knows that we'll be seeking after something that we can see, something that we can feel, something that we can experience tangibly in physical terms in this world. So he says, listen, God is love. But I'm telling you right now, he says, no man has seen God at any time. So don't go looking for visions. Don't go looking for voices. Don't go looking for some physical, tangible experiences. Don't go seeking after those things, running after these things. He says, I'm telling you, God is love, and no man has seen this God who is love. But then how can you see him? You can see him in Jesus Christ, in all that God has done in and through Jesus Christ. Jesus says in, the, in, the, in this John chapter 14, after telling John, uh, Philip, in verse 10 he says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father, the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So what is he saying? He says, every word I speak, I speak from the Father. Not by my own authority. It comes from him. So in that way, you can see the Father in Jesus. Not a direct, immediate vision of Jesus. I mean, vision of God. But... You can hear his words. You can know those are God's words because he does not speak his own words. Every word he speaks comes from the Father. You can see his actions. These actions do not come from himself. It comes from God. It is what God is doing that he is doing here on this earth. What he sees God do, he does. What he sees God say, he says. So his words and his actions are totally from God. Therefore, you can see God in and through Jesus Christ. And ultimately, through the cross of Jesus Christ, you can see how that he is the God of love and know that he is indeed God of love and that he has indeed loved you. And if you say, no, no, I got to see him personally, this is the ultimate revelation that is available to us at this time. This is the thing that is possible at this time. Thanks Says us, triumphant his name. Thanks be God, who always God says us to win. Yeah, thanks be God, who always God says us, triumphant his name. Thanks be God, thanks be God. We have overcome. Speak, who always calls, says us to win. Yeah. 
You're the one, hallelujah. 